Hey everybody, Jab Mernakovich here with All Points Design. That's allpointsdesign.ca. Today we're talking about values-based decision making. And Tristan has a question for me. Tristan, what's your question? Yeah, thanks, Javin. Um, yeah, I'm interested to hear you express why you feel values-based decision making is so important. And I guess I'm curious why people reach out to you to seek it. That's a great question. Um, yeah, it's interesting because you know the first one is why I think it's important, and then the second one is is why people come. <laughs> it's always that, that that change between well, I think this is great versus why people actually come. So maybe I'll start there, and then I'll end with me. Um, you know, by and large, we have a society that's based upon do what you're told, do, do run the path that has been set out in front of you by any number of institutions, any number of cultural institutions, any number of, of previous parents, grandparents, ancestors, things of that nature. And generally the, the successful ones in life are those that chart their own course. And sometimes, sure, they go into a route like engineering, but the way they look at engineering or how they process engineering is very much coming from a place of their own personal essence. So it doesn't mean that we don't operate or take on the advantages or the educational routes or the career routes that are out there. But by and large, as we adopt all of these belief systems and behaviors and processes that society gives us, we end up becoming less able to direct our lives. And so I get a lot of folks who come to me that are stuck or stalled or stagnated in some aspect in their life. They've tried a number of different ways of setting a future goal or trying to get to it. Um, they're relentless people pleasers, and they're really looking for that joyful way to say no. Couples in particular come because they really want to physically, literally be on the same page. They want their beliefs and their partner's beliefs and the values they hold in partnership. Because not, not always do we hold the same values for our own lives as our partners do, but definitely in partnership, it's important to get on the same page. And I've had so many clients, um, Couples and families go, we're finally on the same page, literally. And I know if I go off and do something, because we hold these collective values, this context, this future state of being, we'll be working together regardless. And a colleague of mine calls these bright principles, core bright principles, these principles that you know, pull us forward into this majestic ideal future. And I love that, that these are the values that can bring us into our own state of being, can bring us into ourself, can, can walk us home in many ways. For business, I found a lot of folks who come into this and want to create a context for their business. It helps them guide their business because they've got parts of them or ideas in their past that go, well, my business has to be this. And yet that belief, that pattern, it actually doesn't pan out in terms of be, being able to facilitate other clients or being able to produce a living income or being able to share their work in a way that lets other people know. And then I think for me, why is it important to me is that, you know, if we don't design our lives, it'll be designed for us. And this is one of these amazing inoculations. You know, this is a, um, this is a probiotic of the mind that creates a very diverse, a very robust mind that allows me to take in any opportunity, any, any idea and go, Huh, that's really interesting. I wonder if that's a good fit for me. This whole idea of good fit is probably one of those, those bright shining examples of values-based decision-making, helping us design a life and cultivate a life of, 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 of joy, of wealth, of health. This idea of, does this fit me? Is this a good fit for me in this context as I exist today? Because that river of time is always changing and we're always changing. So we're always meeting these moments differently. But as I come to this moment and I go, is it a good fit for me now? All of a sudden I get to bring all of who I am. I get to become a resource and going into it, I get to resource myself every time I get to go to the source of myself and bring all of myself to this moment and go into the future, building upon, complexing upon all I've been and then building what I'll become in my relationship, in my life, in my family, in my business, on my land. And every single time I do it, I'm better. This is, this is the thing that makes me smile as I'm saying this, because I remember a time before values-based decision-making where it was like, well, I guess I'll do that. I need the money. Or I guess I'll do that. I've got time to, 
huh, how does that feed me? How does that feed all of who I am? How does that make future Javin a better person? And that fundamentally changes the way I operate life. Tristan, you've started to work with this. You started to facilitate folks. Why for you is values-based decision-making so important? Yeah. Um, you know, I think if I was to pull, pull it back a little bit and look at it on a broader, uh, maybe even more philosophical level, I would say, I think what I've come to recognize is it's, it's sort of one of the only practices in this space, if not the only practice that I've seen that is <clears throat> really regenerative um, in the sense that it is deeply interested in finding out about who the individual or couple or family or business or whatever it might be, who they really are. And, and I think you mentioned the word essence earlier, um, really reaching for that essence and bringing it forward but then not getting stagnated in that. So the way the process works, if it is continually applied, it can regenerate that person or people's lives year after year. So as you were saying, getting better year after year. And you know, I, I generally when I'm looking for positive practices in my life or things that I think can continually take me forward, um, I'm looking for the ones that are kind of aligned with the principles of nature in many ways and because nature is naturally regenerative. And so just as a general practice, I feel like this has the tools and if facilitated well, the, you know, the techniques to, yeah, as you said, always help someone or people or an organization get better because it's in touch with who they are and it's never stagnant, it's always regenerating, it's always looking for, um, yeah, I mean, I was gonna say something better. I mean, that phrase is, is uh, a tricky one because of the connotations that it holds, but it's always looking for the best fit, as you said. So yeah, in, in many ways, you know, if something is truly regenerative, then the opportunity is infinite in many ways. And that's really what excites me, I suppose. Uh, it's so well said. That's so well said that that because of its because of its mimicry really about ecology, it's constantly working to regenerate not only the person but to regenerate the elements around that person and the whole that they're managing and the project they're they're applying their context to, and really building and complexing upon that to uh, create that good fit and to create the most amount of connectivity as as they move forward. That's wonderful. For anybody else that's interested in values-based decision-making, there's three ways to engage with it. You can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. You can uh, take part in uh, the group courses. We have one coming up very soon. Take a look at the link below. And you can work with the self-paced course itself. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Uh, never forget that it's never a bad time to redesign your life. And we'll see you in the next one.